I just want to bring to our viewers' attention one of those places that does need more attention at the moment. And as you say, uh, Daniel, there's a lot going on in the world, but the floods in Brazil yeah. at the moment are particularly heinous. We've got some uh, vision here of, of aid workers, of people uh, doing what they can, that generosity of spirit that you talk about. What else can you tell us about mm. the work that you're doing there and what's required? Yeah, thanks for shining the light on this. You know, there's an enormous flood happening right now in the southern part of Brazil. And what we're talking about here is a land like the size of where the flood is, is larger than the state of Victoria. So you imagine the state of Victoria underwater. We're talking about hundreds of cities, uh, 366 schools are closed down and damaged by the floods almost one and a half million people affected, half a million of those have lost their homes. So, and, and with floods, I've worked on floods before, floods don't just stop, right? So this is gonna keep on going for weeks. I was talking with our team last night via WhatsApp in Brazil, and, and frankly, they're feeling overwhelmed because the rains are still happening, rivers are still rising. Uh, this is gonna play out for weeks. And so we have a team on the ground We've committed to working with 70,000 families. That's about 200,000 children. And we're providing them with uh, shelter, uh, you know, emergency food, uh, blankets and things like that. So when you go into a, a disaster situation like the one that you just described in Brazil, what's the time commitment yeah. for, for World Vision? How long do you stay there for? I mean, I know it's kind of like asking how long a piece of string is, but give us an idea. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. So one of the ways that we think about ourselves is like first in, last out. So World Vision's always committed I to speed of action. I know that you're never action, first in, but, Daniel. But we stay. We've spoken about that. <laughs> well, we try, as an organization, we try to be, but I am often the bronze medal winner. <laughs> But we try to get in there as quickly as we can. And so we have teams on the ground. Now, we're going to be there uh, through the process of rebuilding. Mm -hmm. We're trying to raise $8 million to help us do that. But like I said earlier, we're going to take whatever we can get and help those communities rebuild. They need friends right now. Uh, they need community to surround them. And they're going to love the fact, by the way, that I'm talking to you here in Australia and that people care about them you know, so far away. And so we're going to stay That's there good. and we're going to help rebuild. I, I kind of I touched on a little in-joke there, and this might be a good opportunity to plug an upcoming podcast that uh, I'm launching and that you have been a part of. Um, and I'll just explain to our view viewers that throughout this podcast, I mean, Daniel, as you can see, is very optimistic and he always tries to be the first one to a disaster. And the point is that over his uh, three-decade more long career, He's never the first because <laughs> there's always more pe <laughs> always people wanting to help. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. It's amazing. I've always tried to get to the toughest, hardest places, most out of reach places. And I've arrived there thinking I'm finally going to be the first person, you know, delivering the helping hand. And it just never works that way. I mean, let alone you've got families, you've got local people, you've got local fire brigades that are out on their boats. You actually, the Brazilian, one of the Brazilian qualifying Olympic teams actually came back, pulled out of the Olympics to actually help in this. Uh, it's in these moments you always see the best of humanity. Yeah, it certainly is. And we needed that note of optimism this morning. And thank you for delivering it. Daniel, we'll see you soon. Great. Thanks, Laura.